Hi everyone, Paul here. Welcome back to the channel. I make how to videos from subjects like Mac tips, backend, Swift, Salesforce, and game development. In this version of the health system, the health system appears in the top left of the screen as you can see here. We'll look into several functionalities of the health system. Like when we pick up an item, it would increase the health system. We'll also look into decreasing the player's health. So if I jump into this podium, there's a volume here that decreases the um, health. And when the player's health is depleted to zero, it would destroy the actor and this um, menu will come up saying game over and then try again. And when we hit try again, it would respawn the character back to its original state. Let's jump into it. To start off, I'm using a third person template with the starter pack on. So go ahead and create that and then jump into your content drawer. So under your content drawer here, um, just for organization, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it main. I'm going to create two folders here. First is called blueprints. And the other one is called UI. So let's first build the help menu that we saw it there. So right click here and select user interface and select widget blueprint. Select widget blueprint there and let's name this with blueprint um, health. Double click to open. So under the palette here, uh, select for canvas. So this is the first thing that you would add. It's like a holder for the items that you want to add. Next, <clears throat> let's um, create a horizontal box. So this allows you to add items side by side. So adjust the uh, X to 250. Let's make that a bit wide. And then position, drop it down. Uh, let's try 10 and position 10. So that should drop it a little bit from the index from this anchor. So let's add a text here, uh, put it under there, um, and then select that and let's call this text health, uh, even the text block and change the font to 16. And then select progress bar from the palette, drag and drop it here. You would see it would flow um, next there. Uh, let's call this bar and want it to fill uh, put a padding of two and change the color probably to something around green so you can see it, that's how it looks like um, let's do this There you go. Uh, make sure you select fill and that should expand there. Um, the one that we are interested in populating right now is gray is the percent. So here you would see that this value is actually a float. When you move the float, it would uh, increase the progress bar. So we'll figure out how to do that using binding later. So for now, um, let's continue building this. Uh, let's let's add another horizontal box. Drop it here, and let's have a couple of text in here. So you could click here and select uh, Control D to duplicate. And I'm gonna select all of these and change the font size to 16. So for the first one here, I'm gonna call it Current Health. And for the text here, just gonna hard code something like 100. We're gonna, we're gonna change that later. Um, then here, we're gonna call this divider and then just change this to a for, forward slash. And finally here, we're gonna call this max health. And for now, we'll just hard code the value 100. So if I look there, that's how it looks like. If I compile, uh, let's attach it here so we could reference it later. Now, 
to add it to our uh, level here we're actually going to use the uh, third person blueprint that we have here so by default if you go under the event graph there should already be some existing codes here so what we're interested in is in this um, add uh, event begin play so at the end of event begin play right click here and say create a widget and from here select the blueprint that we just created and then we're gonna add it to the viewport and wire that up and when I play now here you can see that the on the top left the health bar is now showing cool so let's go back to the third person and start creating a couple of variables so here we want to create um, let's call this bar health and we want this to be a float and let's also create um, current health and but this time it's going to be an integer type and let's also create a max health and same it's an integer let's compile this and let's populate some data here so for the bar health um, because it's a float um, let's put in 0.5 and for the current health let's hard code that to 100 uh, same thing for the max health let's hard code that to 100 cool so compile and save now go back to your um, hud uh, the, beep, the blueprint widget and go under the help bar here um, so what we want to do is bind the percent to the health bar and the current text and the max health to the text from the BP third person character but so far we don't have a reference for the third person character from our health for from our widget so what we can do is go under the um, event graph here and we could delete this two items here what we're interested in is the uh, construct so once the widget is constructed we want to get the reference to the player so let's do a do once first so we only want to do this once and here we're gonna cast to the BP third person character and let's also say get player character here and return that value there and then for here we're going to promote this to a variable um, I'm going to call this variable player So now that would create a reference to that third person character from here. So basically that's all we need. Um, let's put a comment here and say create character player reference. So compile, go back to the designer and finally go to the health bar here. And from the percent here under the bind, you could now select the player and from the player here, I should get the bar health which is what we need and then for the current health here because um, this is a text field um, I could click here and then I could select current health and then for the max health do the same for the text here select that player and then select max health compile save so those should now be binded if I play here I should see the same thing but by uh, health bar is now halfway populated cool all right so let's create some blueprints where we could increase the health of our, our of our character here so first uh, right click create a blueprint select an actor let's call this bp uh, pickup open this uh, let's create a cube Let's add a cube uh, from the components here. 
and then just resize this cube we're gonna make this look like a cross there you go and then I could hit control D to duplicate it then rotate it like so and I could have some um, deck uh, material here uh, the green one the basic asset zero tree looks good and do the same for the other one and then finally i'm gonna add a uh, spirit collision here so I'll say spirit collision it's a little bit small so we're gonna adjust the radius of that spirit collision so we're gonna hit compile save basically that's it um if i go back to my content drawer here and start adding some spears in here one more over here cool so this would allow us to um, collect this items later but let's go back to that um, to our third person character here uh, what I want to do next is create a function here which would allow us to collect the those items so under my third person character I'm gonna create a new function I'm gonna call this modify health and under modify health here basically I want to create uh, grab the current health and here as well I'm gonna have an input I'm gonna call this health or damage so whatever we get uh, but it's not a float it's gonna be an integer whatever we get we're gonna add or subtract that from the current health so I'm just gonna do an add here and I'll explain later what I, this one so we're gonna add the current health once the current health's added we're gonna clamp it clamp meaning it shouldn't go higher or above the max health so the max health would just be whatever value 100 and the minimum would be uh, zero and then finally we're gonna set the current health whatever the value is returned from here cool and then one thing we want to do as well is um compute the bar health so the bar health is a float but now we're dealing with integers here so one way to deal with this is to actually create a uh divide the current health by the max health and that should return a float so let's do that so let's first um i'm gonna change this to a float And same here at the max health. I'm going to change this into a float. And basically, I'm going to just divide this. Divide by that, that. And then I'm going to set the uh, bar health by quick and dropping that. So, whatever the division is, so if 100 by 100, that's going to return me 1. And that would be the bar health. Cool. And finally, let's um, return the node. Return node. That should be it. Save. File. Uh, now back to our pickup. Uh, for our pickup item here, because we added a spear collision, um, go under the event graph. And I'm just going to delete this and spear collision back again i'm gonna add a be begin overlap so basically when it's the other actor it's when it's the uh, bp player that's over overlapping the collision box we want to uh, get reference to that actor and then we're gonna call the modify health that we just created we created an input parameter for it so for that we could pass 25 as a health uh, input 
if it was negative it would be a damage input but because we added a um, positive one it should add to the current uh, health value now after adding that I want to destroy the actor and I also want to um, play some sound play sound 2d and let's just play this one the cam camera shutter sound cool so when I compile save and then run this now when our third person overlaps there you would see that the value increase by 100 which is not what we want so it should just increase by 25 so let's go back here so the current health is 100 here I'm going to change this to 50 all right so that looks better so when I overlap this they should just increase it by 25 25 and they shouldn't go over more than 100 so there you go that should that's how to increase the health um, I'm gonna add one props in here one component I'm gonna just add a rotate because I want that yeah there you go and go back here play that should make them spin cool so that's how to add the health system. Now let's try adding um, adding damage. Like basically calling the modify health, but this time we're going to add a damage. So back here, I'm just going to go on this podium here. And I'm going to create a um, trigger volume, either a trigger volume, trigger box. Um, I'm going with the trigger volume here and then I'm just gonna size this up to be as big as the box that I have here cool so with this selected I'm now going to my level blueprint so under the section select level blueprint and if I right click and then select this and say collision I can say add begin actor overlap because I've selected the trigger volume it knows that I'm on that trigger volume cool so here what I'm going to do is I'm also going to do the cast to BP actor cast to BP third person character and from here um, I'm gonna uh, what do you call this modify the health Cool. So when I modify the health, instead of adding a positive number, I'm going to put a negative one. So I'm going to say minus 25. Now from the demo that you saw, I have some bit of effects going on. So what I did was I spawn uh, actor from class. And from there, what I'm doing is I'm spawning the uh, blueprints effect. A fire and then for the location um, from the actor for this one you could get the capsule component as well I want the transform get world transform and wire that up and that should spawn the blue fire effect on that character and then I also want to um, attach it to the actor so here say attach to actor component and for the target it's gonna be this one for the parent uh, reference this and attach it to the capsule component and then it should snap to target so let's test this out first um, go back here go back here so when I overlap here you would see that my character starts uh, smoking and then the health got decreased by 25 if I go out the fire doesn't stop but if I go back to that uh, trigger volume you see that the health is now zero 
So a few tricks that we could do is we could uh, remove that, um, detach that component after a few seconds and also check if the actor has zero health then we would want to uh, show a different UI or end the game. Cool. So let's go back to our third person map here. And then I'm just going to put a delay. Um, say delay of uh, three seconds. Uh, let's, let's try two seconds. And then once it's completed, we want to detach the effect from the actor. So say detach, detach. All right, so I can't do that there. What I could do is go back here and under this effects that we just created, I'm going to promote this to a variable. So just going to wire that up. Mm, link, link that, link that. And for the new variable here, I'm going to call this effects. And then go back here. I'm going to drag the effects. I'm going to say detach from actor. Cool. That, there, that should detach it from the actor after two seconds. So let's try that out. So go back here. One, two, after two seconds, now it's gone. Cool. So that's how you um, apply the damage. Now let's create a UI where when the health reaches zero, um, it would uh, show the game over uh, status. So under user interface here, go under widget blueprint, select that and say W blueprint. I'm going to say game over. Open that up. So same thing as before, first thing you want to work with is the canvas. I'm going to add a canvas there. I'm going to add a button. I'm going to drag the button somewhere here in the middle. I probably want to anchor this in the middle there and then reset this guys. All right, so for the button, let's adjust some settings here. The one that I have is on 150 by minus 50. And size is 300 by 100. Cool. And then I'm going to have a text here. Drag it there in the middle. Um, for the text, I'm going to set this to 30. And then I'm going to call this try again. And then another text, which I could drop somewhere here. And this time, this one is going to say game over. So for the game over, um, I'm going to anchor it as well in the, so in the middle. And then change some settings here. So negative 150 by negative 150 and 100 by 30 and change the font to change to 30 and it's not pretty lined up so i'm just gonna move the y yep that should work so save um so what i want to do is go here under my third person character then go back to the event begin play. And basically I want to create a new custom event here. So custom event. And I'm going to say kill player. So under kill player here, I'm just going to put a delay. 
say of two seconds then I'm gonna destroy the actor once the actor is destroyed I wanna pause the game so set game pause and then I wanna uh, create a widget widget there you go and this time it's gonna be the game over widget and we're gonna add it to the viewport add to viewport cool and I'm just gonna comment this and say kill player cool so now we need a way to call this kill player when the health has reached zero so one way to do that is on the modify uh, begin health that we created on the function so instead of returning the node immediately we're gonna create a branch so here I'm gonna say branch and let me detach that first so the condition we want to check is if the bar health is equal to zero so you say equals So if it's equal to zero, that means our player is dead. So we want to call the kill player custom event that we just created. If it's not, just go ahead to the normal return node. Cool. So let's try that out. Uh, all right. So we got an error. Let me go back to my kill player here. I think my error is the add to viewport here. I didn't that tag it properly cool so compile save so that works now let's try go here twenty five zero game pause I can't move it anymore the problem is I can't click the try again button so let's now add functionality so we could click on that try again button once the uh, game is paused. So go back to the game over section here and go under the event graph or the graph section. And here we want to delete this um, event begin play and event tick. We're just interested in the event construct. So what we want to do here is get the player controller. And we want to set mouse cursor. Set mouse cursor. Set mouse cursor. There you go. So set the mouse cursor. We want it to be visible. So tick that. And we want it also on the set input mode UI only. So I'm going to hook that up to the player controller here. And that should be it. Um, I'm going to compile save. So once that widget is added to the screen, it, we should now see the option for using the show mouse cursor. And then we could click and then... Um, uh, restart the game but go bring back to the designer here I click on this button here we need to do the on click right so on click it would create this function here on click of that button you want to get the current level once we get the current level we want to open level by name and just attach at that and it would do its own conversion compile save now let's give that a go so hopefully this should work characters on fire after two seconds it's gone go back to the podium it's game over now i have the cursor showing and i could click on try again but the problem this time is it respawned on the same area, but I don't have control of the character because it's still on the mode UI. We should now go back to the third person character here, 
go to event begin play and at the end of event begin play I could go back to my game over node here and I could copy this uh, two nodes and paste it here so basically once we event begin play happens we want the show mouse cursor to be removed and then we want it back to the input game mode only and we're going to hook this up like so and save and let's try it again so collect yep increases the health decreases the health go back and then for the very last time it's now zero boom so character is destroyed i could click on try again and there you go now i have control again it resetted the uh, game for me cool so hope you learned something from this video thumbs up thumbs down uh, please subscribe to my youtube channel